Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. I only have about uh, 10 to 15 minutes before I go to lunch, but I wanted to say a few words. I was invited here at the last minute. My uh, friend, Jim Young, here uh, uh, invited me, and uh, thanks for having me. Uh, I want to say a few words and show just a very few clips. Project Veritas, um, I wanted to say that we did it. <laughs> and the media in this country, as Bill Whittle said last night, is now discredited. It's dead. And we have killed it. And it's been a long time coming because they put us through so much over the last 10 years. Planned Parenthood, civil lawsuits, jail, defamation, lies, slander, and now we've won. So let me, well, I'm going to walk you through very quickly just some of what I think is the, the, the poignant historical moments. It all started four weeks ago when Twitter kicked me off. I was kicked off Twitter for releasing the videos and, and out of nowhere, thousands of people sent messages to the CEO of Twitter. Thousands of people sent messages to Jack Dorsey and they reinstated my account 36 hours later and when they did, we had 40,000 40, new followers. Um, I, I, I met Donald Trump two years ago. I did a story at Cornell. At the, uh, we, we went into Cornell and we said we were we were an ISIS club, and we wanted to get money from Cornell to do it. And, you know, and we released this video on Cornell Giving Day, the day when all the alumni are supposed to give money to Cornell. We had alumni stop giving Cornell and started giving money to Project Veritas. I got an email from someone from New York from the Trump Tower that said, Donald Trump would like to meet you. This was two years ago. And he printed out this video and said that that's Donald Trump's signature. James, great work as always. Best wishes, Donald Trump. Donald Trump was always a fan, but this is well before he ran for president. Fast forward two years, we release the first video. If you're there and you're protesting and you do these actions, mm -hmm. you will be attacked by Trump rallies. That's what we do. Oh, so, oh, oh, so that's part of the process that's of getting the, whole point. the reaction. The whole point okay. of it is we know that Trump's people will, will freak the fuck out. The security team will freak out and his supporters will lose their shit. So it turns out, sorry for the language, but this is your taxpayer dollars hard at work. So these people were doing these awful, immoral things illegal things, and they were working directly with and for the DNC paid by Hillary Clinton to do them. We released video after video. Them when we were in charge too, so what we did? We did the exact same thing. Only we, we manipulated the vote with money in action, not with laws. It's a very easy thing for Republicans to say, well, they're busting people in. Well, you know what? We've been busting people in to deep fucking asshole for 50 years, and we're not going to stop now. We're just going to find a different way to do it. So, I mean, I grew up with that idea. You know, they, they used to bust people out to Iowa. Finally, we had people actually admitting what actually happens behind closed doors. This took us a year. We had eight people embedded full-time in the Hillary Clinton campaign for one year. We had to set up elaborate aliases. We had to set up an offshore... Um, We created an offshore account and wire transferred $20,000 in real money to this guy. We had exotic sports cars. We had private planes that were lended to me so that I could convince these guys that we were big money people. And finally, we, we got them to confess that it was in fact Hillary Clinton's idea to dress people up in these ridiculous costumes to get punched in the face. In the end, it was the candidate, Hillary Clinton, the, new, the, the future president of the United States, who wanted ducks on the ground. So by God, we will give ducks on the ground. Oh, uh, shit. So it's... Wow. Don't, don't repeat that to anybody. Yeah, don't repeat that to anybody. Just say it right into my... <laughs> Could you just say that the way you just said it, right into my button camera? That man is not some low-level guy, some acorn employee. That man 
was was married to is married to a United States congresswoman is best friends with Obama was a community organizer with Obama and resigned right after this video came out this video <laughs> these videos were the number one trending that's a, a, a beautiful sight to behold in the world the number one trending video on YouTube every one of them was trending number one worldwide and that happened over the course of a week and a half that means when people went to youtube.com the first thing they saw were these videos and the reason why that was is because there's just nowhere else for the citizens to go to get their information I tried and this is an unbelievable series of events. Before these videos came out, I worked with some um, media organizations and I tried to partner with them. I will not give you their names, it's not just Fox. But I went to these co companies and I said, I want, we got a big, big story. They were excited, they had everything lined up. At the last minute, they were threatened. And they spiked, in journalism that means they didn't run the story, for fear of retaliation from a future, future Clinton Department of Justice. They spiked the story at the last minute, and the only people who could have done this were people without any stake in any media company. We broke these stories on YouTube, we broke them on Twitter, and after the people resigned, there was a groundswell. We had 75 million people on Twitter see these videos, 20 million people on YouTube. That's, CNN has an audience of 1 million people, okay? Things are changing. So, but the traditional victory is when you do get things like this to happen on CNN. Different video emerging of a group of pro-Clinton political operatives talking about stirring up trouble and provoking violence at Trump rallies. The video comes from Project Veritas, brainchild James O'Keefe, who's got a less than stellar reputation for accuracy. However, some of the things you'll hear on the table you see the sign? are to ignore enough. We're learning for one person to be fired so far, another to resign. A lot of questions being asked about the recording. Senior investigative correspondent Drew Griffin tonight. So there are people, I didn't even, I didn't know these people. We're in our office and all of us, oh my God, there's, there's people with, with signs in the audience and hashtag Veritas. It was a groundswell. But we have reached the tipping point in this country, I thought it wasn't going to happen, but it just happened, where the social media is now more powerful than the mainstream media. That's just the way it is. So, and then this happens. And then the White House gets asked about it, and I want you to listen very carefully to what Josh Ernest, the press secretary for, by the way, Obama was best friends with Bob Creamer. These guys were organizers together. And Obama, and Creamer met with Obama 47 times, according to public records. It's a matter of public record. And of course, they asked him about it. Um, the uh, Project Veritas videos that uh, have been uh, making the rounds uh, of late, uh, does the White House have any reaction to the dismissal or the severance of two veteran Democratic operatives after the release of the latest Project Veritas videos? And in particular, I want to draw your attention to uh, Robert Kramer, a convicted felon who visited the White House, according to reports, 342 times, also met personally with the President some 47 times, the most recent occasion being in June of this year. Well, uh, I've been asked about um, videos that have come from this outlet uh, in the past, and in each time I've tried to um, uh, urge people to take those reports not at face value, uh, and not just with a grain of salt, but maybe even a whole package of salt, uh, because um, despite what the name might suggest, uh, these videos have not often revealed the truth. Now. You know and I know that a few minutes later when Josh Ernest went behind the curtain part of the stage, he goes, damn it, we gotta cover that up somehow. And it's that moment when Josh Ernest walks away and tells the truth. That's what Veritas wants to reveal. People are fed up, they're fed up with watching people go on stage and lie over and over again. And And that's why they lost, because the American people want authenticity, they want realism, and they want the truth. And these people just go on stage and say, exercise extreme suspicion with James O'Keefe. They, they're tired of the people lying. 
So then what happens? In front of 80 million people, this happens. I have a feeling how they came. I believe it was her campaign that did it. Just like if you look at what came out today on the clips, where I was wondering what happened with my rally in Chicago and other rallies where we had such violence. She's the one in Obama that caused the violence. They hired people, they paid them $1,500, and they're on tape saying, be violent, cause fights, do bad things. And I think it's her campaign. Because do you see how uncomfortable she looks? So we're trending everywhere, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and the mainstream media is trying to cover it up. There was an extraordinary moment, and just to, by way of background, when I was at this debate, and I, I was standing there and, and uh, next to Hannity, and, and you know, Hannity, by the way, <laughs> this guy is a good guy. He, <laughs> he had to personally call Scott Fovel himself to get a comment to see when he was fired because nobody else would do it. He had the guts to do that, and because of Sean Hannity, this story became what it became. It takes some people in the media, sometimes they have to go around certain people to make things happen. That's what, what Sean Hannity did. And then there was this moment, which I just thought was incredible. Democrat are you worried about Democratic violence? Or are supposed to, if they are found to have... You know, uh, I know nothing parts. about this. I'm not, you know, I, I can't deal with every one of his conspiracy theories. But I hope you all have something to eat and something to drink on the way back to New York. Okay? Let's go to Applebee's. You know, yeah, what do you think about the violence? Okay, time to get some food. Um, so then we make the front page of the New York Times. And these reporters really must have hated writing that. But that's what we call breaking through. By the way, no one, no one really reads the New York Times anyway, but it's still pretty cool. Um, and it wasn't just as it was the voter fraud. I'm, I'm going to finish up in one minute. It was the voter fraud that we actually caught these elections commissioners saying that there's so much fraud, and they, but they wouldn't say it publicly. They would only say it in private. Um, we actually got offered... Uh, Brad, we got uh, to Brad talk... Would, uh, we actually got offered Huma Abedin's ballot. Someone here, Laura Loomer, where are you, Laura? There she is. She got offered... She dressed up in a full burqa and was offered Huma's ballot because there's no photo ID in New York City. So I'm just going to show you a couple. The media is trench warfare. This is a trench warfare. People like Veritas and Sean Hannity and other warriors are the tip of the spear. We're fighting them in the trenches. And that's what's important. CNN, Brian Stelter. Hey, Jim. He calls me Jim. My program had 1.35 million TV viewers last week. Hey, Brian, our YouTube videos had 10 million views in the last seven days. Uh, the Daily Show. James, would you be willing to pro produce the raw, unedited footage? You are a producer for The Daily Show. Are you willing to publish your raw videos to accompany your segments? Um, the Washington Post selectively edited out of their article the fact that Creamer was scheduled to meet with Obama 47 times. Dave Weigel at the bottom there says, now, if you show me video, that Obama, video from the meetings with Obama, I'll shine your Pulitzer Prize. I said, hey, Dave at The Washington Post, shouldn't this be your job? <laughs> I'll never accept a bullshit Pulitzer from the corrupt media. <laughs> and then, of course, after the election, you had all these journalists, but so smug, so smug. Oh, Trump um, is a media failure? Oh, shut up. And I said to Politico, I will never shut up. Your organization, Politico, censored and attempted to discredit many contrary sources of information, one of the many reasons why the media failed. And then there was, this is the most amazing thing, how journalists can protect themselves from a hostile Trump administration. Where were you when the California Attorney General raided the home of my colleague David Delayden after the Planned Parenthood videos? Where were you when they put me in jail and destroyed my evidence? Where were you when, where were the stirring First Amendment op-eds when they tried to shut down citizen journalists who had to overcome your firewall to get to the truth? These people are such, such corrupt scum. But the good news is, they lost. And, and the, the facts prove it. 
This is another one of these corrupt journalists. Quote, just a reminder that at this moment when serious journalism needed more than ever, Facebook and Google constitute 68% of all ad revenue. And I said to them, because the people left your media institutions to get to serious journalism being done on Facebook and YouTube, and you don't understand that. People are leaving the mainstream media because they want to know the truth. Um, and then another one, go buy a subscription to the New York Times. We're gonna need robust press. I said, one would have more success just getting a camera and a YouTube account. <laughs> so um, in closing, in closing, uh, my mentor, Andrew Breitbart, God rest his soul. You can, really, you can really fight and defeat the mainstream media at their own game. There's a sort of performance art to it. Project Veritas is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We're tax exempt. We have thousands of people who give us checks. I am crowdsource funded. I have no one who fiduciary controls me, unlike the corporate mainstream media. And we have so much work to be done. A, a word about courage. Do you fear for your life? Uh, you know, all these things. I don't want to address that. But I will say that there's physical and there's moral courage. And people go to Washington and they become corrupted. But what I've learned is that you can play the media, you can defeat the media, and you can get the media to react. You can, you can get the media to react to your narrative, but we gotta focus on the truth. And we have to have both physical and moral courage. We need people in this country who are going to fight for something greater than themselves, but the politicians are never going to do it. It has to be the citizens. It has to be ordinary people who do extraordinary things. My colleagues, people say, me, it was my team. Twelve full-time undercover journalists risking their lives to do this. We need more people risking their lives on our soil and on this soil because the war, as Marcus Luttrell, is, is not overseas. The war is in the media trenches. That's where the war is now. And we're going to have to continue that war. And thank you very much for having me.